But you have a cool life when you're running in your lane and when you're sitting where mm-hmm. God has called you to be and when you're living yes. the life. Because if I'm trying to live my friend's life and my friend's trying to live my life, it's not going to work. Your life is your life and how God wired you and how God wired me are different. Let's thrive in the way that we're created to live. Welcome to your meaningful life where we explore the strategies and tools that help you unlock meaning in every season of life. Today's guest calls herself a global nomad who has served the poorest of the poor and the riches of the rich all around the world. She has followed God into unknown places. She's a woman of many talents, painting, singing and writing to name a few. She also published a great book called Kiss My Fish, Tales of Chasing God Around the World. Our today's guest is someone who has found tremendous meaning and purpose in her current season of life. It's my pleasure to welcome Bethany Anderson. Hey Bethany, it's so good to have you on the show today. Hi David, thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to this, so I'm excited. Absolutely, so good. Um, To start this off, I have a question because you are doing this thing called the Hope Adventure. And the goal, what I understood, is to spark God's hope all around the world. So tell us a bit more how this started. Wow. (laughs) Really, I think it's um, sometimes we travel through life and we're young and we're like, what am I going to do with my life? Just to give you context, I was the kind of uh, kid that did every possible activity under the sun. And my whole life always had a diversity of interests and passions. And the message I received was like, just pick one thing just pick one thing. And it's funny because I, I, in my spirit, I just like fought that my whole life. Um, I say that because what I'm doing now is the culmination of all of my gifts, all of my talents in one sort of creative, messy package. So the backstory really is that I was a missionary for several years. I worked with different mission Mm -hmm. agencies um, globally. I worked across Europe and Africa and the UK in particular. I spent some time in Australia as well. Well, And my travels just um, ignited something in me. I kind of became really passionate about following God into unknown places. There's people that are fearful about the unknown. And I'm not saying I don't have those moments, but I kind of get really, really excited about the unknown. It's kind of like a blank canvas with a lot of possibility. And so it was last year in 2021, I had been doing all sorts of things. I was back home in the US in Texas where I'm sort of based when I'm local. And yeah, I just, I I launched this ministry called The Hope Adventure. It actually started out as a podcast by the same name oh, wow. and the podcast yeah. yeah started which you know because you've been on my podcast thank you yes <laughs> um <laughs> it <was a> yeah <laughs> so it started with the idea of sharing stories of hope of god at work around the world and so mm-hmm. out of the podcast i launched what i thought was going to be the hope adventure which was me running retreats and leading worship and singing and preaching and yeah, doing all sorts of things. But then I spent a month in Hawaii when I launched it, which is a crazy God story in itself. And as soon as I launched it, I felt like the Lord said like, no, I want you to like strip back and take everything off the table. And I'm going to take you into a season of incubating the dream, which which I was like, okay, but I just like, built this thing and I thought it was this thing. And then he basically said, I want to take you on the hope adventure first. And in going on the hope adventure, then I'm going to give you vision for what it's going to be. What are these unknown places? Because maybe not everyone can actually can see what that means. Like, is that okay? Are these undiscovered places or what does what does unknown mean? No, I yeah, that's a great question, actually. 
Um, it's really the idea that we are not in control of our lives, that God is, and He knows. And following Him into those unknown places is almost just like a posture of life to say, hey, God, whatever you have, wherever you have it, I'm willing and I'm, I'm available to go and be there. So mm -hmm. the idea of the unknown place, it could be anywhere. It could be geographically. It could be in your career. It could be in family life or singleness or anything like that. But it's just the idea that I can set goals and I can have aspirations for my life. But at the end of the day, like I want to follow where the Lord leads and where he's guiding. Um, and so, yeah, and that's essentially what this whole project became last year. I just said, God, just take me to where people need hope. And the mm -hmm. last year I spent in 13 countries across 10 months, really. And then that's mm -hmm. culminated really into what the hope adventure is, is, is that's why it's about going for the one and kind of sparking hope and, um, yeah, just meeting people where they are. And Jesus very much was intentional about going after people where they were as mm -hmm. they were. Mm -hmm. And that is really the heartbeat of the hope adventure. Yeah, so exciting. And you've said that you've gone for the one and for the one, so capital O. Yeah. Um, tell us one of the stories. I, I'm sure you have so many stories <laughs> to tell us, but just one of the many you experienced. Yeah, I will. I, yeah, you're right. I have so many stories. In fact, this last year I put out like a little magazine of these stories. But my favorite story is one that like really just I think about almost every day, to be honest. Um, I call it my Thomas on the train story. And so basically what happened is I was in Europe for a season and then I very quickly realized I needed to get out of the country <laughs> because of something called a Schengen visa as an American. Um, and so on the last day of my visa, I had to get out and I went to the UK kind of unexpectedly. But again, I was following God into, quote, unknown places. So at that time, London was one of those places for me. And I was on a train um, going to take a friend to church, uh, somebody who had just moved to London and was kind of connecting them into a community there. And I was on the train. It was kind of an empty carriage, but I, I was sitting there and I looked over and I heard this guy and he was homeless. He was asking for money. And he said, hi, my name is Thomas, and, you know, I'm 34 years old. I am addicted to drugs and alcohol, and I'm homeless, and life does not look like what I thought it would look like. And I'm just asking for 10 pounds mm -hmm. to get a warm meal, a warm bed, uh, you know, a place to sleep for the night. It was, you know, cold there. So it's not uncommon that you run into homeless people on the train in London, but for whatever reason, I just felt like, I just kind of felt like a prompting from God that said, pay attention to this guy, listen to him. And so as he came closer to me, I started a conversation with him and I said, Hey, Thomas, like, tell me more of your story. And he began to share a little bit more of how he got to that place. And I mean, how he got to essentially begging on a train in London. And I said, well, how much money have you raised? And he's like, well, mm -hmm. I did this all day yesterday and I, I raised six pounds and I've been doing this all day today. This was 6 p.m. at night, by the way. And he said, I've been doing this all day today <laughs> and no one's given me any money. So in my mind, I thought four pounds, that's nothing. I can like make up the difference. So I mm -hmm. had already committed like to cover that difference, but I reached into my wallet and I didn't have anything but a 20 pound note. And, um, which is not that big of a wow. deal, but I was like kind of wrestling with God at that moment. I was like, do I give this guy the 20? Do I have him like follow me out of the train station and I get cash, which seemed kind of ridiculous. And so I just, I felt like, well, th this is the Lord's money and I want to use it to build his kingdom and to bless people and ignite hope. So I said to Thomas, I'm going to give you 20 pounds and hopefully that's going to give you more than one night's sleep and one, one meal. Um, and I, and I said, can I pray for you? And you know, his face kind of was like, mm, not really sure. And I wasn't forceful, but I was like, I, I really just want to bless you. And so I handed him the 20 pound note and I said, I just looked him into the eyes. I said, you know, God is with you and he sees you and he hasn't forgotten you. 
Like, none of this is an accident. Like, he wants you to know he's still there. And Thomas looked at me just kind of like with a look of shock on his face. And I could see the tears welling in his eyes. And right after that, it was my stop. And I got up to get off. And he followed me off the train. And he said, you know, 10 minutes ago, I was cursing your God because I used to know him and I was cursing him. And he said, Mm -hmm. but he sent me you and you gave me money, but more importantly, you gave me God. And he began to just weep in the train station. And we had an exchange, I gave him some information. But when I walked away from that moment, here was the kind of massive revelation that I had. It was, A, how many people are walking around cursing God that we know, we have no idea, under their breath. They're angry, they're bitter, they're resentful, they've had a lot of disappointments in their Mm -hmm. life. Um, The other thing is, is that I watched him go from like disdain to wonder. And, and hmm. so in that moment, I was like, that's so simple. All of us can have that role of like, it's almost like tapping somebody on the shoulder and just like saying, hey, look, there's God over there. And so his face mm-hmm. from went, went from this place of like, hmm, to like, huh, is, whoa, is God real? Is he really with me? And I realized that that posture pivot from disdain to wonder is like, Wonder is the beginning of worship. When we Mm -hmm. ask a question, oftentimes that is the beginning of transformation in our lives. It's the beginning of a search, of a journey. I mean, how many times Mm -hmm. in your life have have things changed because you asked yourself a question or someone else asked you a question? And so with Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas, it was like watching him go from, yeah, like just like a disappointment to like, wow, is God real? Wow, he just showed up like, so I carry that story with yeah. me. Um, yeah. That's an amazing story. And what I love, Bethany, is that, well, you responded to God's calling. You went to unknown places and uh, you just listened to whatever God is up to in that moment. And you're such a good example of someone who found meaning in what you're doing and significance and joy, actually. Um, yeah, looking at the stories you're telling is like, wow, it's your experiences so so much and this is this is really powerful and um what i like is um um you say you invite people to discover god as their greatest adventure and i think that's exactly what you are experiencing in in that moment and in other uh, in other stories yeah and it's it's interesting because you know I, I don't think necessarily i'd be curious to hear what you think about this like I don't think necessarily people describe a relationship with God as an adventure, but like I'm an adventure junkie. I love to travel. I like adrenaline, high adrenaline. I like, I went sledding two days ago in um, Alpenstadt, which I'm probably ruining the way I say it is wrong, but um, I'm in Switzerland right now. And yeah, I went down this Alpine sled and I always get really annoyed when I go down those because I always get stuck behind really slow people. And I'm the kind of person that puts the like handle all the way to the front, which means you go like flying down the mountain. And um, that's kind of how I see the journey with God. Like it's an adventure. (laughs) You don't know what's coming up around the curve. You don't know when you're going to have to pull on the brake or go faster or, you know. But yeah, discovering God is your greatest adventure. What that's about is like just lean into God. He knows. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll Mm. provide for you. He's the one who created you. So like your purpose will become more clear. The meaning in your life will become more clear in your connection and in your abiding with God. And that is the greatest adventure of life, I believe. So, so I'm curious about you though. Like, like where, like you seem to like adventure as well. So how do you think about your journey with God? (laughs) Well, I think adventure really describes my, my journey. It's, it's, a, it's a, an adventure. And um, if I look back, I, I'm just in wonder because in, in, and awe because I would have never imagined a, like getting where I'm at right now. Like n- yeah. not in my wildest dreams. I left a corporate career 
well, even before that, actually, I, I did some crazy, crazy things. I, I did a PhD while after about 10, I think it was about 10 years into my work life, at, yeah, around 10 years, which was a crazy, crazy thing to do, but I felt it was right. And then uh, I, I had so much fun also working and then I felt God calling me to a next chapter and I uh, resigned. I left a, a great job, um, great people, great company, um, a secure job for an adventure and I moved to Cambodia and <laughs> but it's been so great it's I, I never regret that decision um, it's not an easy it was never easy it, uh, even the journey was not easy but it's so worth it and um, mm. it led me to things yeah I think it opened new doors uh, I all of a sudden I had more time to write a book to start a blog to start now YouTubing and blogging which was never planned you know it's all it's an crazy. adventure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's an adventure yeah and i think it's op it, it all comes down to having the right mindset and to be being open to mm. that yeah i think you're right i think i think mindset is not something that we necessarily talk a lot about in christianity but uh one of the things that i'm working on right now with my ministry is i'm going to be leading pilgrimages for women all around mm -hmm. the world and so i'm writing curriculum in the form of something I'm calling a hope journal. And I say that because the it's all based around posturing your heart with God. And really another way of saying that is your mindset, because that mm -hmm. is something that, yeah, we have to be intentional about our mindset. And I think, you know, I'll give you an example. Last year I was in Switzerland as well. And I went up to Zermatt, one of my favorite places. I know one of your favorite places. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I went on, yeah, and I went on the cog train up the glacier and it's a steep mountain train and on the way down, um, I hiked halfway down the mountain and then I took the rest of the train down. The train broke down literally on the steepest part, like the incline that was like that, you know, and out the window oh, wow. was like the perfect view of the Matterhorn. But right next to me was this American couple and they were young, but the girl started screaming, like screaming like she was going to die on the mountain. And mm. unfortunately started saying, you know, we need a refund and started kind of getting into this like angry, like, oh my gosh. And here I am thinking, this is the best adventure ever. Like who gets stuck on a Swiss mountain train? This is amazing. I have the best view in the world. <laughs> like I get extra time on the mountain. Um, you know, I'm just like living it and loving it. And I, I just realized though, that like, that is not everyone's way that they view life. And I don't know if it's no. part of how I'm wired or just how I've learned to like, see the adventure of God. And like, one of the questions with the adventure is I'm always asking like, God, what do you want to teach me? What do you want to show me? Mm. Um, what, what do you want me to notice that I haven't noticed before? And in that moment, it was actually, actually in the aftermath of, of that that I was talking to someone and they were like, you know what? I think it's like God's reminder that he's not going to let you go. Like he's not going to let you go barreling mm. down the mountain and that he's with you. So that moment of adventure and kind of crazy mountain train, they had to like pull the train down the mountain. We had to get off at another stop <laughs> and it was a, it was a, <laughs> it was an adventure, but it was just a reminder that God's with me. He's not going to let me derail basically. if I keep leaning mm -hmm. into him. Yeah, absolutely. And you're mentioning, uh, you're addressing an important point because um, I think there are two sides to the coin. Adventure for somebody like you is a lot of fun. It's exciting. It's wonderful. But I think even for you, pr probably there are moments when you feel it's too risky or it's lonely. You're traveling all alone by yourself around the world. It's tough. Uh, you have a lot of unexpected things happening to yeah. you so how do you navigate these ups and downs that are sometimes <laughs> extreme <laughs> yeah well it's funny i was telling someone yesterday uh last year i was gone for 10 months like i mentioned 13 countries i think i had four eye infections i had covid twice i had like three stomach bugs um all sorts of issues like headaches migraines and, you know, and a part of that is, that is part of the adventure. But in the moment mm. when you're laying in a strange wonky bed in the middle of South Africa and you have COVID and you can't breathe, it's not fun. 
and it doesn't feel like an adventure. It feels like survival. So I don't know that I, yeah, I don't know what my um, sort of solution to that is, but I think it comes back mm. to mindset because mm. we can go into that mindset very quickly of like, woe is me. My life is so hard. This is such a terrible situation. And I don't want to discount the real emotions and the raw emotions that come with those kind of situations, whatever that challenge is in your life. Maybe for some people mm. it's feeling really lonely or uh, you have broken relationships or major, major health issues. I'm not trying to downplay the emotions of that, but I think I've just learned that through whatever happens to me that God is with me. And even if it doesn't mm. feel like that, I know that that is the truth. And one of my key things is I have, even though I travel a lot, I have a strong community that I stay connected to. I have mm -hmm. two really good friends that like constantly know what's going on, not just like physically, geographically, but like what's going on in my heart. And often the conversation mm -hmm. we have is like, what, how's your heart doing? How's your soul doing? Um, I'm a spiritual director as well. And some of the work that I do with people in that is it's essentially soul care. It's helping people create mm -hmm. space to connect with God and really pay attention to what's happening internally because we are holistic beings that God has created. And he's, he's like, like light invades every corner of darkness. Like he invades all of us, our body, our mind, our spirit, our soul. And so I think it's just important to remember that we're not alone and, and to, to put mm. community around you when life is hard or, or when life is good too. Mm. We all want to celebrate too, you know? Yeah. And speaking of loneliness and mindset, um, well, it's not a secret. We're both um, seasoned singles. Let's call it like that. <laughs> we, have, yeah. we have shared that multiple times on podcasts and YouTube and so on. Um, and yeah, you're traveling. You spend a lot of time alone. As you said, you have friends who know you well, but I imagine there's still times of loneliness or times of a lot of challenges. Um, I think the single life is not always easy. How do you yeah. deal with that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, I think it is difficult because there's a difference in sitting with a person face to face than sitting like on a computer screen like this. Mm. Um, for me, it's really cool because everywhere I travel, I feel like God provides people. So like I I've been in Switzerland a ton. I used to live here. I used to have a strong community here. Well, a lot of those people have moved away. But even in this trip right now, like I'm staying in this home alone, um, kind of house sitting for my friends. And a lot of my close friends don't live here anymore. But it's been so cool because the last couple of weeks I have met so many new people. And yeah, it's just the Lord provides that for me. Um, but I also say that like, yeah, there's also moments when it's like, oh, it's a Friday night. I just want to like hang out and have dinner or watch a movie with someone just to have like mm. companionship that doesn't have to be about getting to know someone, or, but just like being in someone's company. Um, yeah, and that is hard. And I, I don't, I don't know. So I think it just depends like how it comes. Like sometimes I'm in a good headspace and I'm like, no, I can just appreciate like being alone on a Friday night. And other times I'm like, mm. oh, I just want to hang out with someone. And I, I don't know what I do to fill my time sometimes then. Maybe I just turn on Netflix. I don't know. I cook something in the kitchen. I don't know. But I do find that God provides people along the way. But I'm curious about you. Like, how do you deal with the same situation? Because you also travel a lot. And I know you're more stable in your community now. But yeah, it's 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 probably a bit similar like you because, um, Bethany, because uh, I, I have a, a couple of stable friends. Uh, Sometimes we meet in person when I'm in Switzerland or then we meet over a camera. It's, it's as you said, it's not the same, but it's still yeah. great. And certain type of people just are so easygoing and I can share whatever I'm living, even though we don't spend every single time together. We just yeah. pick up wherever we stopped the last time. So that's great. And I do have also a community here. Obviously, it's the expat space. Sometimes it's a bit changing. It's not always the same people. Yeah, this can change. It's not always easy, but it comes down also to mindset and just to say, well, it's what it is. I want to see the positive side of things. And there's a, yeah. there are a lot of advantages. Like when I have discussions with 
people who are not single, they sometimes tell me, hey, David, I'm jealous. You have so much yeah. time to work <laughs> on your projects. You have so many things you can do. You can travel. And I tend to forget that. Um, mm -hmm. I think, yes, there are a lot of challenges, but there are, there are up and downs and it's not always easy to be single. That's for sure. Yeah. No, I think that's true. It's funny. Um, one of the things that happens to me a lot is I'll have people just message me out of the blue and it just always feels like God's perfect timing. This happened to me two days ago. Hmm. I did kind of an exploration Sabbath day through Switzerland. Um, again, because I could and I'm single and I had the freedom to do that, which is a, such a blessing. But I had this girl mm -hmm. that I knew 20 years ago reach out to me. She was like, I know I don't, hmm. I don't talk to you much, but I just want you to know I, like, I pretty much watch everything you do. And she just sent me the scripture and like, it was such an encouragement. It was, hmm. it, I, she just spoke all these really deep things into my life that I didn't realize I needed. And it was such a gift. And, and I feel like the Lord does that a lot. Um, and that's, yeah, that helps in, in those hard moments. Like, so on the Friday night when I feel really lonely and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm tired of watching Netflix mm. alone or I'm tired of going for a walk by myself or whatever. Like, I just want people. Those encouragements help me get through that, I think, sometimes. But mm. I, I also mm. have a question that I want to ask that I think is kind of, I don't know if it's something that you've thought about, but I think it's possible to be living a life of meaning and purpose and feeling fulfilled and also waiting on the thing that you still desire in life. And I'm curious, you know, like for us, like we've talked about this a lot because it's singleness and, you know, like wanting to be married and wanting to meet that person and move forward. Um, but like, how do you balance that life that feels fulfilled mm. while you're still waiting for something that you really desire for your life? And I'm just kind of curious your thoughts on that. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. And um, it's something I've, I wrestled with for a long time. And finally, I realized that I don't have to wait because for too long, I, I, I believed that I needed to wait until I find the one, my soulmate, to actually finally start living my purpose. And, and that's wrong. I realized that I could live already right now my purpose as a single person. I can live God's purpose. And I don't need to wait for someone or for something to change. Um, obviously, I still have the desire to get married and that's good. And sometimes there's a tension, but it doesn't mean that I'm missing out on my purpose or, 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 or on significance in life. No, that's totally um, not the case. That's wrong. And that's also what I like in your life, um, Bethany, because you manage, you found the way actually to unlock meaning in your current season of life as a single person. Mm -hmm. And it is a challenge for a lot of people. So what was your, maybe like a aha moment, like what helped you unlock meaning in this very season of your life? I feel like there's so many moments, but I don't know. I mean, my, my personality tends to like maximize things and kind of like you, um, it's really interesting because if I look at the course of my life, um, you know, as a seasoned single, which means we're not in our 20s or 30s, <laughs> um, I look back at my 20s, which I spent here in ministry in Switzerland, and I was not focused on finding a husband at all. And in fact, it was like, whatever, I'm living life to the full. I'm going snowboarding on the weekends. This is the best life ever. I'm doing ministry. I'm working with international au pairs. This is amazing. And then I think it was like in my early 30s that I was like, wait a second, shoot. Oh my gosh, all my friends are married. They're having babies. Like maybe I should like look for husband, you know? And then I feel like I, I spent a couple years at home, like in the U.S. trying to fit into a mold, trying to fit into the white picket fence and the husband and the 2.5 kids, which is kind of a joke, um, and car, you know, nice car and mortgage and all the things. And I tried, I tried that. I was in a relationship for two and a half years that should have ended on day three. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I, I was, I mean, he was a great guy. I'm not, that's not, it was more of like, I knew from the beginning, like this was not what God had for me. And he was kind of giving me warning signs and I just ignored it because I was tired of waiting. Then I realized, wait a second, my focus is in the wrong place. 
I just have to live mm. what I'm called to live, and I have to be who God created me to be. And it may look very different. I'm about, I have had to fight the cultural expectations growing up in sort of Bible Belt conservative Southern Christianity, where everyone gets married, you know, before they're 25. They have a bunch of babies, and like that's the life you live. That's what was painted for me, and it's taken me years to figure out like that's not who I'm called to be and that's okay. And in fact, it's more than okay. Like I can thrive in that. And I think the most shocking thing for me is that people look at my life and they're like, oh my gosh, you have the coolest life. And I'm like, yeah, I do. But you have a cool life when you're running in your lane and when you're sitting where mm -hmm. God has called you to be and when you're living yes. the life. Because if I'm trying to live my friend's life and my friend's trying to live my life, it's not going to work. Like your life is your life and how God wired you and how God wired me are different, but like, let's thrive in the way that we're created to live and like push against. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know what? That actually comes back to identity because mm -hmm. our identity as Christians is rooted in Christ. We are who God says we are, not who culture says we are, not even sometimes who we say, who we say we are. Um, and I think that's just really key for like living with meaning and purpose and also recognizing that life is never always perfect. There's always something in your life that's a little bit, you know, like us, we, we, we're like full ahead with purpose and meaning, but we're also still waiting for something that we desire. And that's how life is. It's the balance of tension, the tension of, you know, different things. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm curious, Bethany, because, uh, obviously you love adventures. You see the advantage of your singleness also for your career ministry. But is there sometimes a moment where you struggle to find meaning in your current nomadic missionary lifestyle and calling? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, I don't know if it's so much that I struggle to find meaning in this, but it's challenging to constantly sort of break new ground in a nomadic ministry. Well, really, it's, that's about relationships. So I travel to a lot of communities where I already have relationships. And part of that is because I lived in, you know, six countries over a 10 year period before the season that we're talking about now. But sometimes I find myself in new places and I almost have to fight the mindset of like, oh, you have to come and improve yourself because people don't know you. And yet in places like Africa, I find that they, they're just like, this is the way I say it, that when I show up in Africa, like people are like, we want the God that you know. We want to see the God that you know. As fellow Christians, mm -hmm. it's like they want to know the God that I'm bringing. Just like I want to know the, the God they're experiencing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, th I think as a ministry entrepreneur is what I would call myself. I definitely have days where like I have to keep the bigger picture in front of me mm -hmm. because the details can feel overwhelming or like, cause paralysis where I'm like, I have so many irons in the fire and so many, you know, um, trips I'm planning or ministry events I'm planning a retreat doing one-on-one, -on -one, you know, direction with a client, whatever it is that if I'm not careful and if I don't keep the bigger picture meaning in front of me, then I can kind of get paralyzed in the overwhelm. And that's definitely a challenge. Mm. And in that place, I think it's easy to lose your momentum of meaning and purpose. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I don't know if you have a similar struggle, but for me, that's definitely a real thing. Well, it's definitely what you said to have keeping the big picture and, and knowing actually where you're going, because um, it's so easy to, 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 to get trapped up in all the small things and all the disappointments and in all the hardships and things that are difficult and the busyness of life. Yeah. And I, I find it so... Uh, critical just to have these retreats and to have moments when you reflect on your life or your journal in the morning or uh, what I do now is for instance I try to take a trip at least once a month uh, uh, just to go somewhere next week I'm gonna go uh, four days to Bangkok just gonna fly there and uh, spend the weekend oh. and just to spend time like like you went uh, in switzerland on a day on to the matterhorn or so um i think it's so important just to to look at that uh, again and i'm i'm wondering um bethany because you have so much experience in all different areas of life um 
in, in your ministry and traveling. And as you said, you're an entrepreneur. I love the term missionary entrepreneur. <laughs> or, I've never used it before until now, but I was like, oh, that's actually quite uh, it's, accurate. It's actually pretty, pretty good. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Ca- do you have any advice to the people watching or listening how to live your best life? What a small question, David. <laughs> Absolutely. That's um, on purpose. <laughs> One gosh. thing. One thing. Oh, my gosh. How to live your best life. This may sound like a weird answer, but you've probably heard it said that the way to find out what you're good at or kind of the path that you're on is to look at your past. So for me, you know, I'll just tell this quick story. When I was little, my dad traveled a lot, and he always brought me an international doll from wherever he traveled. And I had in my bedroom, I had this shelf that lined with all these dolls. And it was literally probably about five years ago that I looked back and realized I was so drawn to these dolls. They were mostly women. They were all international. And I was like, wow, this is what I do with my life now. It makes so much sense. And I think sometimes when we're like, trying to figure out our purpose and our journey. It's like, it's like walking through a dark forest and making sure the branches don't slap you in the face and you're kind of like digging through and then you come to this open clearing in this field and you're like, oh, this is where I was trying to get to. But actually the path that got you there was part of the journey as well. So I think living a life of meaning and purpose looks different for everyone, but start with what you love. What are you good at? What are you passionate about? I mean, you and I are both passionate about travel, about people. And look at the life you're living and the life I'm living. Like, it includes all of that. Yeah, start with who you are. And if you don't Mm. know who that is, then go on that journey. I love that. Start with who you are and start with what you love. I love love it. Very simple and good advice. As we're wrapping up, Bethany, where can people find you? I'm pretty easy to find, I think, but uh, my website is thehopeadventure.com. You can find all my socials from there, but I have a YouTube channel called The Hope Adventure. You can find me on Instagram at The Hope Adventure. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Bethany, for all the insights and the great stories. Thank you for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to see you.